this is what we're trying to do in our business. It's based on spin selling method, a uh, very popular sales selling method for real estate and other businesses. Again, I'll drop a link to this in the chat. Let me do that. So you guys all have it. All right. So you guys can, uh, again, these are some of the questions you want to ask. So we are moving to these questions now. Uh, basically for the spin selling, it's you ask them about their situation, you know, uh, essentially kind of more or less ties into this right here. You're just trying to get a little bit more information about the property, how long they've owned, you know, uh, is the property um, vacant or occupied? Uh, and then you can build this in your lead intake form. So when your lead manager is calling in, they're asking all these questions initially when they're calling. And then the next thing, once you have that information, again, these are, you know, more like a complete list of questions based on the information they gave you and the situation part of uh, the, the question that you asked them, you want to kind of go on to the problems. Okay. You know, just figure out what the problem is. What is the real motivation to sell? So think of it like, why do they want to sell? You know, what made you consider selling your property? Have you had any difficulty in finding a buyer? You know, what challenges have you faced with, uh, with your property? So you're trying to uh, figure out what is the real need for them to sell the property. And the next part, once you have some information about the property, you figure out why do they want to sell uh, the property that they have. The next part is where you, you know, these are called implication questions where you're asking them, you know, what would happen if you could not sell the property in the near future? What would happen if you were able to sell the property in its current condition? So just so that they understand, you know, what are the consequences of if they're not able to sell their property, you know, given the condition the property is in, or, you know, the market it might be in. And then this is, you know, you're trying to almost like the, the benefits that we bring to the seller, to the homeowner as a real estate investor, those are, you know, baked into your question right here. You know, how would you feel if you had to pay commissions and other fees associated with selling your property through a real estate agent? You know, just so that you can eventually, when you go into the next part of question, you can just talk about the benefits that you have. Again, you're not asking them about, uh, the price, how much do they want to sell? You're basically laying the foundation, getting all the information, setting up the situation for them, asking all these questions. Again, these are built on the information you've given and you can add additional questions to that. And then once you get to the, the last end for the spin selling method, you're asking them, hey, what benefits you see in selling your property to a cash buyer like me? You're, you're not necessarily telling, hey, I'm going to buy your property, but you're asking them what benefit would they see in selling a property to a cash buyer like yourself? You know, how important is it for you to receive a fair price for your property? You know, what impact or what would you do with the extra time and money you would say by not having to list your property with a real estate agent? So again, these are all the benefits and value that we bring to homeowner as, uh, as investors. So that's what we want to focus on. That's where all the questions are built around all the value that we bring to a homeowner, uh, like, you know, what impact would it have on your daily life to no longer have to worry about maintaining or managing your property. And you can change the language based on how you see fit, but this is kind of what we are doing in our business uh, in terms of like communicating, uh, you know, negotiating with these sellers. And then, so based on the information you provided, it sounds like selling your property for cash without having to list with a real estate agent could be a great solution for you. I would happy to discuss my offer then. At that point, you're saying, okay, I will present you an offer. Would that be something you are interested in? And then you kind of proceed from there. You don't make the conversation about the price. You make it about, you know, the problems that they're having with the property. And if they were not able to solve the problem, what would the impact be on their life? And then if they were to solve, you know, how would they feel about that? And based on that, you make your offer. So again, I dropped the link in, in the chat. So if you guys want, uh, you know, you could download it and then copy and paste in Google Drive or kind of and change your question. But this is kind of what we're using in, in our business. So once you ask the question, based on that, you are, again, qualifying the lead. And if it's if you're able to qualify the lead, at that point, you're setting up an appointment. So for us in our business, our uh, lead flow is our deal flow is, we go on every single property, we go on an appointment, very rarely, you know, we'd make an offer or even if you make an offer, we still go and look at the property afterwards because we're doing some uh, big rehabs in our business. So we will still go and look at the property. Uh, so for us, if the lead is qualified, get an appointment for some 
you know, for someone else, uh, you know, who's not going on an, um, on a prop on an appointment, but you're making offers over the phone, you know, in a virtual market, this might be, you know, have the acquisition manager, uh, make an offer. If the lead is not qualified, then what do you want to see? Is this something where the lead would be qualified in, you know, let's say six months, say everything checks off, but for some reason, the lead doesn't want to sell, you know, is unable to sell for next 12 months. Then, you know, it's not really a qualified lead, but it will be qualified in about, you know, it will be a qualified lead for you in about 12 months. Then you want to put them on a long-term trip follow-up um, and you have their name and address. We do it once every three months just to stay on their radar. And that's that's the whole intent of that trip campaign is all you're doing is just staying on their radar, uh, following up and asking them, uh, hey, this is... Sharad, you know, we had talked about your property at one, two, three Main Street. Just wanted to check in and see if uh, if you're still looking to sell. Let me know if you need anything. That's that's it. You're not trying to sell them on anything. Just you're staying on their radar. And after you ask them these questions again, you know, let's say it comes back on mortgage on the property is hundred thousand, and the property is only worth hundred thousand. At that point, it's not a qualified property, or you find out some other uh, reason for which the property will not be qualified. We, in our business, are moving that property over to a dead lead. Now there are other, you know, investors using Resimply. For them, it's not a dead lead unless, you know, as long as the owner is alive and the property is not sold. But that's, you know, depending on what your business model is. For us, if the person is not interested in selling or they don't qualify for some other reason, we just move it to dead lead and we take them out of any other marketing we're doing, at least for next six months a year, then we'll reach them out again through a direct mail campaign or some other marketing channel, or if they reach out to us through some inbound marketing through PPC or website, then we'll kind of uh, pick up from there. But, but that's kind of what we're doing.